to another uh, mostly English lesson with uh, Stefan's Garage. Uh, today we have a visitor from nearby, Jacek, with his uh, brand new Road King Special. We are going to do a Wilbur's install. As, as far as I know, there is no Road King Wilbur's install video so far on the internet. So we will start a little bit featuring the bike and everything around here. Then we will do uh, a very short unboxing because there are many videos who already unbox the Wilbur's set. And then we will get our fingers dirty. Liebe Bikerfreunde, heute wieder eher Englisch, aber das Wichtigste ist auf jeden Fall auch so zu erkennen. Äh, wir bauen an diese wunderschöne Road King Special, nagelneues Motorrad, nagelneu, 1600 Kilometer drauf, bauen wir einen Wilbers Nivomat ein. Ähm, soweit ich weiß, gibt es noch kein Road King Einbau Video und es gibt ein paar Tricks hier bei den äh, 2014 und neueren Modellen um das möglichst schnell hinzubekommen. Ja, wir machen ganz kurzes Unboxing und schauen kurz die anderen Sachen an und dann geht es schon los. Ich muss mir ganz kurz die Kamera holen. So, das Allerwichtigste, wenn man hier zum Schrauben kommt, dann gibt es Kaffee und immer ein bisschen was zu knabbern, dass es nicht zu langweilig wird beim Zuschauen. Ja, hier haben wir die wunderschöne 2021er Road King Special in Vivid Black. Vorne haben wir sie schon aufgebockt und es wird wie bei allen Motorrädern losgehen, dass wir zuerst Frontfender, Vorderrad raus machen, um dann die Gabelholme rauszubekommen. Das ist bei der Road King ein bisschen schwierig, weil wir hier natürlich die Lampenverkleidung haben und es gibt die Variante, die komplette Lampenverkleidung zu demontieren, dauert natürlich und wir werden heute eine Abkürzung machen. And I just realized that I stuck, stuck, no, that I stuck to German, so, the English version. Um, as always, we start at the front end removing fender front wheel in order to loosen the fork legs and here we run into the first issue on the road king models because we have no access to the upper triple tree pinch bolt i will show this later on in detail so uh, one way is to totally disassemble the lamp housing which is quite time consuming uh, but we will see a shortcut later on and if you Visit me for some wrenching, you will always get coffee and some sweets. Und wir fangen an mit dem Unboxing, ohne meine Finger in die Kamera zu halten. We start with the unboxing. Very important, the installation note, read the instruction before you do it. Then this kit was already ordered in October, so special deal was a free t-shirt. I hope that it fits, Jacek. Thank you. Then we have some document, documentation, instructions and the warranty. Then we have two liters of the required fork oil. We have a new set of fork springs. And we have the Nivomart shock and the conventional right hand one. And all my customers get a free keyring that's special. So that's all that's in the box. Let's get our fingers. So through. after unpacking, we start with the front fender. It is a quarter inch Allen socket Das ist <lacht> So, jetzt bräuchte ich dich gleich zum halten, Jacek. Nicht erschrecken, das ist nur so laut, weil das Loctite, das Weiße mhm. hier. Halt den Lass. 
Genau, halten das. Wir nehmen den dann nach vorne. Warte, warte. So, ich habe ihn. So, just. Now there's no risk of dropping anything and damaging the front fender. Next thing is removing the brake calipers. Those are from Europe, Brembo, Italy, and therefore it's a 10 mm socket, 12 point. We start on the other side. kannst du bitte in den Beutel rein und den Beutel dann irgendwie auf den Sturzbügel und Bremspedal ablegen, dass wir nichts zerkratzen. is removing the front wheel or loosening the front axle nut and please note that this pinch bolt is still tight so there's no need to hold the axle on the other side we can just loosen it but it's totally different story when we reinstall the wheel That was a 15 16 standard socket, by the way, and as the fork is from Showa in Japan, the fork hardware is metric, and for the pinch bolt it is a 6 mm Allen. We are definitely not doing a fork rebuild after 1000 miles, so we just loosen the screw, but we can leave it in. And now we should be ready to remove the front wheel. some new grease on it during reinstall. Basically we are ready to drop the fork legs. Those are the two quarter inch Allen pinch bolts and another one is up here where my finger is now pointing. And let's see if I get this on camera. No, it is too dark. But you can feel it, you can see it down there. And as there's no way to get in a torque wrench, we will mark this screw with a white pen before we loosen it. And after we are finished, we will just tighten the screw back to the exact marking and then we have the right torque that was applied before. So the screw is marked. And the only thing that we need to do now is sacrifice a quarter inch Allen, which I cut short. Let it just get into the Allen head and I will loosen, lose it by about, loosen it by about one turn. That should be enough. So, and I show this as the light is not good up there. 
and I show this on those screws down here. So that's basically the short Allen key. Yeah, that is enough underneath the lamp housing and then I need some leverage in order to loosen it. So first we do the two regular ones. If your Road King Special or Road King has some windshield hardware or the Road King Standard, then you might need to loosen those screws because, well, it's Harley. Sometimes those screws pinch or almost pinch the fork legs and therefore it's not possible to get them out without loosening those two screws. So, jetzt müsstest du bitte, ich habe den Lenker nach vorne gehen und die Gabel halten. Was haben wir hier? Das ist nicht von uns. Mhm. Müssen wir mal schauen, was das ist. So, die Gabel, das, ist das untere Teil wird jetzt gleich rauskommen, wenn ich mhm. hier oben löse. Vorsicht. Jetzt noch einmal umgreifen. Here we have the first one. Now we will loosen the top nut or the fork cap. I use an old, not an old, but I use an oil filter tool. And normally these top nuts are not too tight. Let's see. No, they are not. It's a fine thread, so they don't need to be very tight. And now it's getting, as always, Serious. I have the thing. Mm -hmm. The fork legs are quite under some pressure, but it's not too much. As you see, I can still push it down by hand. But nevertheless, we need to counter the preload. Otherwise, there's a risk that we hurt ourselves when we are removing the top nut. And basically, the important part is just at the end when the thread is getting loose. And for that I have an electric wrench. Doesn't need to be uh, an impact. And I need a leather glove because there's a very sharp preload sleeve in here. And I've done it before that if you miss the exact spot, then you will hurt yourself with the sharp edges of the preload sleeve. Okay, dann darfst du nach die Seite gehen, dass du vom Kopf her weg bist. Maybe we do need an impact. Yes, we do. We will return after these messages. So, Stefan's toy box didn't have the right toys. Yeah, that looks better. Slight pressure with my belly. As soon as you see the O-ring, it is getting serious. Okay, now I can feel that it's completely loosened. And if you do this slow enough, there's no risk of hurting yourself or damaging anything. And this is the preload sleeve I was mentioning, so pretty sharp edges. Then we have the washer, which we will reuse. And some really nice brand new 
Harley fork oil, which we are not going to use. And a not so nice Harley fork spring, which we definitely as well are not going to use. Okay, Jacek, then bitte einfach nur tropfen lassen. Mm -hmm. Ich hab's doch. So we will just drain the oil, try to get out as much oil as possible. We won't use any brake cleaner because if we have brake cleaner inside, we will not be able to get it out completely. I will clean the preload sleeve in the meantime. Okay, question I get always, I often ask, why do just simple different springs make such a difference? The reason is it's quality steel, specially surface treated. And let me just grab this. Jacek, you can just feel it, how soft this one is. Mm -hmm. And then feel how rough oh, the original the one is. Yeah. And higher quality, other progressive um, wiring, and that makes the big difference together with the other oil. Okay, yeah, we are good to go. So we will fill in the Wilbur's oil, therefore, so we will use the provided Wilbur's oil. And before we set the final level, we need to get the air out of the system. So, jetzt müsstest du unten halten, weil ich hochziehe, mm -hmm. also yep. dass ich es nicht vom Boden wegziehen kann. And therefore, we don't use the glove, but we cover the top end and create a vacuum. And the same down. And we do this about 20 times until we hear that the noise inside the fork is not changing anymore. And all the Cavities are filled again with oil. Und sonst kennt man eine gute Geschichte. <laughs> okay. That should do it. And then to calibrate the level, the fork leg fully compressed. Oh yeah, we lost quite an amount of oil. And now it's like marked on the outside of the box, 110 millimeters of oil level. Just not to make any mistake, please double check. Yep. 110. nur oben ein bisschen drauf halten, dass der nicht wegrutschen kann. Here we are, 110. Okay. And now the important stuff. Hardy spring is mounted this way, progressive end down. The Wilbur spring and many other aftermarket springs are mounted just the opposite way. That's critical to have the correct oil level. So, dickes Ende nach oben. Then the washer. Then we should have the preload sleeve, but we will wait a second in order to use a trick for later on. So those beginnings of the fine thread are hard to find, especially under pressure or when compressing the fork. And therefore, and therefore we will mark just the beginning of the thread. Hopefully, the reassembly should be easier. The Wilbur's 
spring is normally a little bit shorter than the original Harley, but the preload for the assembly should be the same. Schau mal, gestern habe ich es zweimal geschafft von Hand. But today is a different day. We try. <laughs> okay, good thing is that all the markings are gone. No, this one is here. Yeah, this one is here, but the no, other one. Ah, there it is, yeah. No, not by hand. Jetzt haben wir es auch weg, oder? Da ist er. Wissen wir noch, oder was? Lassen wir mal kurz neu. Und irgendwie bin ich ehrgeizig, ich möchte ihn gern von Hand schaffen. <lacht> So, one more try before we use the tools. Careful, I think we've made it, but it still could spin off. As we yeah. Take your time in finding the right thread because you don't want to damage anything here. And now we torque it down. Factory spec is 30 up to 80 newton meters, which is quite a big spread. Uh, we go for 45 newton meters and that's not too tight, but definitely safe. So, Maschek, du kannst bitte das Gabelrohr schon sauber machen komplett, hier alles. Check 45 Newton meters. Mm -hmm. Forty five point one. That's yep. close enough. So first fork leg is completed. We will now use the axle trick in order to have the right setting of the fork leg in the triple trees. And uh, I will show that axle trick later on when we install the second one. Oh, basically, we can show it right away. The axle trick is using the axle in order to get to the correct setting of the fork leg. See, we have a lot of binding here with the axle because it's not seated properly in the triple tree. And if the axle is moving absolutely without resistance, then we know both fork legs have the same 
setting in the triple trees, which is important for a good suspension. Double checking. Yeah. That's it. That is good. And we will do the fine tuning with the second fork leg. Now we will torque down the lower ones with 22 newton meters. And I just want to show one thing. So as the lower ones are clamped with two screws, we need to repeat the step about three to four times. Now you see the top one is good. Then I do the lower one. And now getting back to the top one. It was good before, but now you see it is loose again because of tightening the lower one. So you have to do this step a couple of times until both are at the exact value of 22 newton meters. Okay, that is good. And we will tighten down the upper one to the color marking that we did before. Um, we will pause the video, do the second fork leg, and then return with the axle measurement and when we do the assembly again. Okay, welcome back. The second fork leg is installed. Everything is torque to spec and you see the axle is moving without resistance. And now we will install the front wheel. Make sure that you have the right direction. Yeah, here's the arrow. And the bone in OBS symbol. It's starting to rain, this gibt's ja nicht. Okay, here we go. Now, as I mentioned, we need to hold the axle as the pinch bolt is not yet tightened. Lass uns ja einfach das mal reingehen. And in addition, if we just tighten it, then the ABS sensor might turn. So we need to hold it we need to hold it up here until we have a little bit of initial tightening and then we are good okay we torque it down to 89 newton meters yep. 89 it's 98 uh, 89. 98. Das ist ja 98. Auf 
English. Yeah. <laughs> so the value is correct, just the English is not correct. <laughs> yeah, very good. 98. That's the exact value that we need. Ninety-eight point three. I need to get some more English lessons. <laughs> and twenty-seven for the pinch bolt. Yep. I need to do my homework. So once again, I need to do my homework. Just get this assembly finished, and then we will do some preventive rain measurement uh, measures. You see this one, see eyes. And we will show this on the other side. With the brake caliper. Just make sure that the threads are already engaged. And if they are, we can use the power tool, das rote bitte. between 39 and 51, so we use the mean value of 45. Note that there is no blue Loctite or any Loctite recommended as the brakes might get hot and then the Loctite might melt and is not doing its job. wenn du drüben halten kannst. Careful along the tire. Mal so halten. Ja. Etwas höher. Die muss ich noch mal gleich schauen. Ist noch nicht properly engaged. Dann liegt hinter dir die Ratsche. Mm -hmm. 27 newton meters and blue Loctite is the mean torque value out of the service manual. So, and as always, we do a quick rehearsal. We talked the axle with the correct value. Those brake calipers, those fender screws, and all three of this fork leg as well. All three of those the fender, the brake caliper, and the pinch. Our front is completed. We will now lower the bike and then put the lift onto the back in order to lift the rear wheel.
make a side-by-side -side comparison. Can we this good scene here? Yeah. That's quite a difference, I would say. Note that the Wilbur's shock is about one inch, one and a half inch longer than the low Hardy shocks. So the Wilbur's shocks always come in the standard length, like the new ST models or the Ultra or the Road King standard. Is it nice and screwed fast? Rear wheel is just barely touching the ground, so we have no tension when we loosen those shocks. And once again, just with this bit past, quite a difference. So this one is doing all the magic in the future. So we need, of course, blue Loctite. And you will see it right away. I will start with the lower mounting bolt. Make sure that the thread is engaging. And you see here the height difference from the old lower shocks to the new Wilbur's or standard length. Therefore we need to lift the bike. And it's basically the same that Hardy is doing with the ST models. However, they are using the same cheap shock absorbers. So we have the same lean angle like on the ST models. And we have a much better shock absorber. So we will later on talk those down to 90 Newton meters between 85 and 95. So as well, we have the blue Loctite. We start here with the lower bolt. And you see, it's a little bit tight up there. So we need to lower the bike just a tiny bit. Einmal umschalten und dann ganz leicht runter, nicht viel. Jo, passt. So we don't want to force this bolt into the thread. Everything has to be nice and smooth. Because there's a risk of damaging those threads if we don't pay attention. Good. And let me just mention the mounting direction. The left hand Nivomart shock needs to be, yeah, as the name left hand would apply, needs to be mounted on the left hand side and the blue LDC powered by CF sticker needs to face to the rear. And on the right hand side we have the conventional shock. The Wilbur's label as well needs to face to the rear because down here there's a small gap in the lower spring mount and that makes sure that all water from rain or from cleaning the bike can drain and is not staying here within the spring mount. Okay, 90 Newton meters are set and we have an extension that I can stay away from work. No, uh, we're getting close to the to the muffler and I don't want to scratch it so therefore I'm using the extension. Okay. 
So everything is torqued. Let's just check the belt tension. Yeah. Looking good. So we are finished with the install, but most important thing is now the 20 millimeter rider sack. For that, we will uh, install the left hand saddle bag and then take the base measurements. I will show that later. Left hand saddle bag is reattached, and now the very important thing the initial setting, and then you can forget it, no need to reassemble it again. So we take the base measurement between the two shock absorber mounting bolts. For that, the rear wheel needs to be completely off the ground, which it is now, you see, completely off the ground. And then we just take the initial measurement between those two bolts and on my measuring device I will mark it here at 18 centimeters. And now we need 20 millimeters rider sack. So with Yatsek sitting on the bike, it needs to go down to 20, otherwise we have to readjust the preload. Okay, Jacek, let's go. Throw a leg over your nice Harley. Uh, the linken Fuß aufs Pedal. Okay, we have a little bit more than 20 and we don't have the right hand saddle bag and Jacek is not wearing his helmet. So it's within factory spec plus minus five, but we need to increase the preload a little bit. So, jetzt bitte aufstehen, aber noch auf dem Bike bleiben, nur dass ich dich nicht mit... So, to increase the preload, we loosen the top ring of the preload adjuster. And then we have five millimeters, so I would go for maybe four complete turns. And that is very important. Also, you provided your weight when ordering the Wilbers. This definitely needs to be done to have the full Wilbers experience. So, just a quick check, dann wieder draufsetzen, bitte. Exactly a little below 20. As I mentioned, not full riding gear. One bag is missing just half of a turn more. And then we're good to go. And now just tighten the top ring again. Everything is tight and the install is completed. Let's see if we can do a short test ride before the rain gets too bad. And now, Jacek, what are your first impressions? E, było idealnie, naprawdę. Różnica nie i ziemia. A co? Aha. E, polecam każdemu pieniądze, które warto wydać na 100%. Ok, guys, you have heard. Everything is not as expected. He wants his money back. He's the first customer. I'm very sorry to hear that. Exactly. No, <laughs> seriously. Uh, I think the smile on his face is just uh, yeah. expression itself. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>